Hey, welcome. This video feels so overdue, um, but essentially I'm going to be swatching out and sharing the Faber-Castell Dual Artist Pit Pens. I'm also going to be sharing how I have been using them over the past year, and hopefully this will be a helpful resource for you to turn to if you're considering buying them, if you're curious about different colors, or if you're just interested. I bought the set of 30 when they were first released in Jackson's and thankfully that set was actually on sale so I bought this 50% off which was amazing and I was omen and iron for the longest time but I'm glad that I got it in the end and I'm going to show you why. So in addition to having the 30 artist pit pens the set also came with a few extras so it came in a nice case it came with a chunky jumbo pencil in 2B it then also came with these extra pens. So a bullet nib pen, a soft chisel pen, a brush pen. And as well as that, there's also a soft brush pen. And I'll swatch with both of them and show you the differences. And a metallic pen. The artist pit pens themselves, let me pick one up as an example. So they come with, they are dual ended and they're relatively chunky. So one side has the brush nib, as you can see, and then the other side has a 0.8 size fine liner. You can mount this on the back. I always get asked that and I always forget to say, so yeah, you can mount them. And then there's like this little thing here to stop them from rolling off the table. They come in a set and there's also a set of 30 that does not come with the actual case and a lot of the time that set is more expensive i'm not sure why so just always be sure to double check between this set and the other one and see which one is cheaper because sometimes at the moment this is 50 pounds cheaper than the one that doesn't come with the case and doesn't come with the extra pens and the pencil and i'm not sure why they do have thinner smaller artist pit pens i don't have those ones i haven't tried them i don't know how they compare but just as a heads up these are specifically the dual marker artist pit pens this first color is light yellow glaze 104 this is a color that i use quite a lot actually even though it's super super faint as you can see and i'm doing this in my royal talent sketchbook even though it's faint i really like it for adding initial layers because it's quite faint i'm then able to kind of go over them and it's just like a subtle glow so i found quite a lot of the time um, when i'm using the pit pens for my underlayers which i'll show you in a second i like starting off with a fair color and this is usually the one that i grab then this color is cadmium yellow which is a lot warmer and it's really nice and actually what i'm going to do is show you both sides just so that we can see how they perform and a key reason that I'm doing that as well is to highlight that it's really important with these markers and I think with a lot of markers in general like alcohol markers as well to store them flat so I don't actually store them in this case because I feel like if they are in if I can see them, I'm more likely to use them. So I actually have them in drawers on my desk, but whichever way you're doing them, I just highly recommend that you have them horizontal laying flat as opposed to having them this way, because then what will happen is one side will get oversaturated and the other side will fade um, the same way that it would with alcohol markers. The next we have green gold, which is interesting because this itself doesn't look like a green gold, but let's see. That's interesting. It doesn't look like a green gold at all. Let's see the other side. And also, I have done some swatches. I did some swatches when I first got them, again in the Royal Talon sketchbook, which this is. So we can have them out just to check for comparison. I did have three colours that I forgot and I left them, despite what I just said, I left them standing. And I'm not sure if this is one of them, but it may be. I only left them standing for a day. So my hope is that with time... They will just go back so that's 268 so yeah it's still the same similar color to what it was like before 268 so we'll have this for reference for comparison at the end as well then we have dark chrome yellow
nice bright orange even irrespective of what it's called and following that we have orange glaze 113 which is even brighter these pens have india ink inside them which means that once they dry they do not or should not reactivate one of the things that i have found as an absolute happy accident is that when the, you first lay them down you do actually have some working time so you do have like maybe 30 seconds where you can add water reactivate them and almost completely dissolve them almost as if they were watercolor markers and then once they dry they dry and they stay put which has been so great and so fun and i'm going to show you how i have been using that property this is beige red one three two yeah it's interesting because i was really in two minds as to whether i should get this set especially because they are not cheap and i kind of felt like are they just felt tips am i <laughs> am i being ripped off and am i going to end up spending lots and lots of money buying felt tips but i don't know i've just really enjoyed using them um, and they are said to be light fast. I haven't tried them myself and I've only used them in a sketchbook thus far. This is Coral 131. And then we have Middle Purple Pink, which is a super bright pink colour. And I'm doing both swatches so that you can see because it is possible for them to kind of like change a little bit. They shouldn't change drastically, um, as in they shouldn't be different drastically, especially if stored flat. But it's always good to have something to refer back to. So this is Cinnamon 189. This does not look like Cinnamon at all. So I wonder if this is one of the ones that I left, um, that I left the wrong way. I think it might be because if we look at 189 before this is the color that it was and this is the color that it is is now so again just a warning not to leave them standing upright i think i left them for a day maybe two i can't remember <laughs> i can't remember but i'm hoping that um leaving them flat now as i have will fix it in a few days and if double check the description if it doesn't fix them then i will let you know so i will probably wait for a week or so and then see if they are back to normal or if they are still oversaturated on one side whoa that is bright oversaturated on one side and um desaturated on the other this is scarlet red 118 that is pretty and then we have deep scarlet red that's like a beautiful lipstick red but it's interesting the fine liner one is a little bit pinker like you can see a little bit more pink i guess because it's not as saturated then in we have sanguine which is 188 The purple violet i think one of the things that i really enjoy appreciate and love about these as well is unlike acrylic markers which are completely different granted there's none of that you know pumping reactivating action and for that i am very grateful because <laughs> uh, that is the one thing that i really hate about acrylic markers this is phalo blue that's really pretty very very pretty blue And then ultramarine, which is interesting because this itself doesn't look like an ultramarine colour. It looks almost like a, a periwinkle, like a, a light blue. But the actual marker itself looks like a slightly lighter ultramarine blue. But it's closer to ultramarine than blue than the barrel. And that's the other um, thing it's always helpful to swatch because as you can have probably gathered the the body of the markers are just like a rough indication of the color but they are not like super great so i think it's always helpful to have swatches so that you can actually see what the color on the inside is like then next we have sky blue and cobalt turquoise 
light. That's a really pretty colour. I'm curious to compare them to the very, very first swatches that I did. This is phalo green. Again, prime example of like name doesn't match the colour on the tube, which I mean doesn't match the colour on the pen. And we'll see if it matches. Yeah, so this looks like a phalo green. And as you can see, that has absolutely nothing to do with, <laughs> with the actual colour of the pen on the outside. Then we have ice blue, 148. That is nice. Again, a colour that I like using for doing like initial light details, but it's quite cool as expected. So, you know, if I'm doing a winter scene, then maybe I would draw this. Or if I, um, I don't know, if I'm doing something that has that icy kind of feel to it, then I would probably pick that up. If not, I would go for the light yellow that I showed you at the beginning. Then this is dark phalo green, 264. Looks very similar to phalo green itself but we shall see how it dries. Then this is May Green. Really nice green. I like these kind of greens, you know, natural looking greens. And this is a color that I used lots and lots and lots. And I will show you when and how. Then we have Leaf Green. What? Ooh. 112 which is as the name implies a super bright leafy green we have permanent olive uh 167 it's really nice how these lay down on the royal talent sketchbook because the paper is just really nice and smooth so even like hot press paper i think would work very nicely for this or any sketchbook paper. I do think if you do lots and lots and lots of layers, it can eat away at the paper, not as much as acrylic pens, but still um, be careful with that. So this is chromium green opaque. That is a really nice natural green, like a moody olive green. And then we go on to the browns, which I admittedly I haven't used as much but it's still nice to have them. So this is raw umber, 180. This is dark sepia. Whoa, look at that. That's really nice, very rich brown. And then we have Indian red, 192. Then we have two grays, the first one being warm gray, 3272. I think these would be nice for like tonal studies like you know just taking one pen out this is cool gray 232 I wish it was the slightest bit lighter like I do tend to prefer cool grays to warm grays but I wish that it was a bit lighter so that it could be used for like subtle um, tonal studies and then we have black look at that oh it's so smooth and then i want to swatch out some of these that we have on the side so the first one is black 199 and it is the brush pen applying different amounts of pressure and then we have the soft brush that is super soft it almost reminds me of the um you know the Fudunosuke pens? That's what this almost feels like. The both of them. And then we have the uh, soft chisel. Should be interesting. I mean, as the name describes, it is chisel tip, but it is soft. I almost thought it would be like the Pilot Parallel pen, but it's not like that at all. And then we have the bullet nib which is just like a hard bullet nib. There's no variation in the line width. And last but not least, here we have silver. Again, it's a bullet nib, no variation. Let me show you some close-ups and then I will show you how I have been using them in my art.
Okay, so I'm back again and I just wanted to show you side by side the swatches that I've done now today, a year after buying the Artist Pit pens and the swatches that I did when I first bought them, just so that you can see if there are any clear significant differences. I think the main one for me is this cinnamon. And as I say, there were three colors that I had that I forgot and left upright. The other two, I can't really remember which they were and I can't see like a massive difference between the swatches but with the cinnamon I think that it's quite clear so this is cinnamon here 189 and this is cinnamon here 189 so these two these two were once the same color and as you can see it's a lot darker now so that is probably the one that I'm going to test out to double check that it is okay. Does it come back to the light color that it used to be or is that permanent? But that's something to watch out for and double check the description for and I'll keep you um, updated and posted on that. But with regards to the rest of the colors, just so that you can see them by, side by side, I can't really see a significant difference between them. Then we go to the greens and what I found funny is that I did a double swatch both times. So I guess both times I was confused about the fact that it's not actually that dark maybe the a color that is ever so slightly different actually now that i look at it is the phalo green so it looks more phalo green now however when i first watched it it was lighter where is green gold 268 ah 268 green gold so again maybe slightly darker than it used to be but not massively again i need to i'll put a dot it might be that these were the three i in hindsight, I don't think that the phalo green was actually one of the three. I think it was this, this, and a different color. 146 is maybe ever so slightly darker. So this is 146 when I first watched it. This is 146 now. And those are the colors in comparison to how they are now and how they were when I first got them. I guess one of the clear things or one of the things to consider is that they are rated as light fast. I have kept them in a sketchbook. I haven't exposed them to light but it, there is the possibility that they have ever so slightly changed perhaps they've gotten lighter or perhaps they're darker now because of how i stored three of them um but as you can see for the majority the vast majority they have remained unchanged and as you can see here as well this is what they swatch like um both the brush and the fine liners so that's the swatches and the colors just in case you're interested in buying them they are available open stock and i'll leave a link down below in the description if you do buy them from jackson's and you're a first time buyer then you will get 10 percent off for using my link and i am hoping that i'll be able to get a discount code in the future for everyone else as well but yeah you can buy them open stock if you like you can also buy them as a set and i just say just as a reminder there are two sets that have 30. one of them comes with a case and has extra pens and a pencil the other one just has the uh, markers and for reasons unknown the one with the case and with the pens and with the markers is sometimes quite significantly cheaper than the one that comes without all the extras so just be sure to double check both if you're interested in getting the full set so that you don't get the more expensive one by accident now let me show you how I have been using these pens and how they've been working. So I really fell in love with them around, I want to say May, yes, May of 2023 when I was doing my fruit series. And the way that I have been using them as I kind of highlighted to you earlier is that this, for example, this was one of the first pieces where I was just trying to get familiar with using the artist pit pens. How do they work? How do they blend? I wasn't really that into markers. Um, so this is created using just the markers with these colors swatched out here so that I could get a little bit more familiar. As you can see this, I did in one, two, three, four layers overall on this, like on the pit, on the middle bit. And I was just seeing like, how will it be tolerated in the paper? Will it eat up the paper? It doesn't to a certain extent if you let it dry between layers before you go, before you keep going over and over and over. I think four is probably like, the most that I would do after which it starts eating up this paper anyway. So this is how, so initially I was just experimenting, trying out the artist pit pens on their own. As you can see, they 
they to me they do kind of remind me of juicy felt tips no shade no disrespect because i am enjoying the process but they're not as like liquidy and paint like as acrylic markers and then the way again this just using the artist pit pens on their own and again artist pit pens on their own again artist pit pens on their own and then at this point i started using the artist pit pens with other medias and this is where i really fell in love with them and i just kept painting over and over and over again so more times than not what i would do is start off with the this light color or any light color but basically start off with the light color of the artist pit pens knowing that i then kind of have a rough sketch to work on which is not going to get reactivated as i add additional layers and i was letting it dry between adding them and i would add so this for example this branch is all artist pit pens as is this branch and it's probably hard to see now but just underneath the peaches themselves they did initially start off with just a bit of the artist pit pens and i've created a video highlighting my process on Kofi. so if you're interested in seeing how i've been using the artist pit pens the different ways that i've been working with them then i recommend that you go back and watch those videos so this again was using the artist pit pens and like for example here you can see like my sketch so use the artist pit pens and then go over it with gouache or go over it with watercolor. I really wanted a lot of white space. I kind of felt like it was helping the painting breathe a little bit. I can't quite explain it. So my aim wasn't to always cover up my entire sketch. And that is why I used the super light artist pit pens to do all these details. And again, <laughs> playing with white space and contrast and colors, artist pit pens with gouache on top. And I've also created like a a sketchbook tour of this whole sketchbook but also one for Kofi members going into more detail on these pieces that I created so if you're interested be sure to watch that so again as you can see here like the sketch was done with the light yellow glaze artist pit pen and then I was able to go over the top same thing for here although I think I actually used the cadmium yellow so I used something that was slightly brighter to do that first initial sketch and again same here i used the beige red to do the sketches initially and then went over the top again here i used the beige red to do that sketch and then went on top so i would use the artist pit pens to do the sketch then i would use them to add bright pops of color and then i would go over the top with gouache so sometimes you would be able to see the extra bright pops of color and sometimes you wouldn't but still actually this is the piece that i did real time but sometimes you wouldn't so this for example again i used the beige red artist pit pen to do that sketch and then i also used bits of yellow to add extra bits of color and same technique here and in these pieces again all the same technique here i used the dark chrome yellow which is actually just an orange to add those extra sketch details and then painted over the top and went back to the light yellow glaze here i don't know i just really really enjoyed the process and i kept i created so much during that period of time because it was just so much fun to use them and it's funny because I didn't anticipate that I would love them as much as I did. And I've created a full length sketchbook tour talking about all the art in this sketchbook, which I'll leave linked for you. But this is essentially how I would sometimes start off the sketch minus the pencil. So I would go do the outline and then add extra bits of color. And this for me would be ready to add watercolor or gouache on top of same process for these i just think this is so cute but yeah same process for this and on this i also added new color twos on top so i was really having a field day with mixed media and it started off with the artist pit pens as you could probably tell it started off with swatching them and then all of a sudden creating all these pieces so i really really enjoyed them and this carried on to this year and this sketchbook tour will come soon if it isn't up already so 
similar technique but different so here again I was using the artist pit pens but instead what I started doing is using the artist pit pens and watercolor and it was through the pressure of timed studies that I discovered and I learned that you can actually really reactivate the artist pit pens and almost get rid of the marks that they put down almost entirely and then you can let them dry and then you can go over them paint and they won't reactivate. So almost like everything that I had wanted from the ink tense blocks that I never got, I got from the artist pit pens by accident. So this, for example, would have been beige red here and I just made scribbles down, reactivated all of it and then was able to watercolor over the top without it reactivating. If I had just laid it down and let it dry without adding any water, then that wouldn't have reactivated. And this is a technique that I then replicated through the rest of this book. And I'll show it, I'll share the full sketchbook tour coming soon. But it was a really fun, happy accident that taught me a lot about the artist pit pens. So just to demonstrate that and highlight that, if I add water now, as you can see, They've had plenty of time to dry, so they are not they are not reactivating. However, let me show you what happens when you add water straight away. So if I put this down, for example, and then immediately move it away and add water, then I am able to reactivate all of that. And then I can let it dry. If I do the same here, for example, add some yellow there and then also some of this and reactivate that and add that, then again, I can reactivate the two. Oddly enough, I feel like they reactivate better on watercolour paper than the um, Royal Talon sketchbook but as you can see they still reactivate and you're still able to go over them and go over the top if you want so not only that you can also lay this down and then blend on top and they should as you use them get clean this isn't the way that I tend to use them but in theory at least you know that there is the option to do that should you wish and again you can reactivate that if you want you can go back over the top using the artist pit pen should you want but you can also use like watercolor and use this as a way to do a background layer when you're doing mixed media work so for example as you can see you can then go back over the top using just the watercolor and the reason that I picked purple isn't just because I love purple although that is true I do but it's more so so that if it was reactivating you would see that it would start to turn brown so this is just a few of the different ways that I have been using this and if for example I take pink then you'll see the pink here is staying pink and it's not turning into orange in these pieces, I was also able to blend them and mix them with the watercolours themselves. So it's not just that you mix the artist pit pens with the artist pit pens when they are wet, but it would actually reactivate the artist pit pens using watercolour and just got, again, some really nice and interesting core cool effects. And this is another example of using the artist pit pens to do the background and once that had dried I went over the top and did this flower for example and just didn't have to worry about reactivating the background which is why I was able to do this painting in 15 minutes and this painting in seven minutes and if you are interested there is a replay available on Kofi for Kofi members same again is said for this and I think this is actually when I started realizing just how much I could activate the artist pit pens so I just did like a few squiggles along here and a few squiggles along there and added a whole bunch of water and could just create a really nice wash and yeah in some places you can see the lines but in other places you can't so again it just depends on the feel that you are going for and yeah I hope that you have enjoyed this introduction into the artist pit pens into how I use them the colors that are available 
the different possibilities within them and if you do have any extra questions by all means feel free to ask them down below in the description if you're still watching then you are a real mvp and i really 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 appreciate you let me know that you are still watching because i love to hear more about you by telling me whether you use mixed media and if you do what are your go-to combos for me at the moment is watercolor gouache and artist pit pens and neo color twos so i guess the answer is yes i absolutely love <laughs> I love using mixed media. What are you into? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll definitely love the series of next ones where I share my favorite art supplies as well as my most used art supplies. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.